Hey guys, I have been waiting to film this video literally all year, so I'm so excited that I'm like, I'm so excited that it's the end of the year and I can do this now. Also, I was going through my glasses in this video, but you literally cannot see my eyes, so I'm just going to take this off, um, because like the reflection, there's like snow and everything outside right now, so it's like so bright. Um, anyways, so I have all my books here. And some of them I have read online, so like I'll just put the picture of the book up here instead of like actually having it. And then also two of the other books I do have, but I don't have them right now. My sister's actually reading them right now because like we share books, like might as well, you know. Um, so I'll just put pictures of like all the ones that I don't have and that I read online. I'll just put the pictures of them up here. Um, but I do have all the other books right here. Um, <laughs> so... This is going to be the top 10, and I have them all written down here, so I, like, remember what I was going to say. So I'm going to, like, do, like, a little plot summary, not, like, spoiling anything, like, in case you want to read these books. Obviously, I recommend all of these books. Like, I literally love them so much. The number one book, in, like, in this video, which, if you know me, you already know what it is, but um, that book is literally my favorite book that I've ever read, like, not just this year, but that I've, like, ever read so we're gonna start with like two books I didn't have in here so these are like honorable mentions or whatever um well it's really three books but so this is the first one A Map for Wrecked Girls by Jessica Taylor this book like it was just so good but like not as good as all the other ones you know what I'm saying and then also um these two books it ends with us and it starts with us um there is another Colleen Hoover book in this lineup though so it was like between these two and that one and like that one just like I related to that one more you know so but these are like the honorable mentions so there you go what well, number 10 is one that I read online this is The Maidens by Alex um, I don't know how to say his last name. I don't know how to say a lot of these people's names, so I'm just not going to say them rather than mess them up. But all of these books on this list, like, I rated them all five stars. So, I read, like, 38 or 39 books this year. So, like, all of these ten and those two, and actually a few other them, a few others of them, I rated five stars, but all of these are five stars, just so you know. Okay, anyways, The Maidens, um, I really liked it because it was, like, a crime, like, thriller that was also, like, set in, like, a, um, like, a boarding school or, like, university or something like that in London, and I really liked that, and there's, like, huge plot twists and everything. It is number 10 on this list because I actually accidentally read a spoiler for it and just kind of ruined the whole, like, literally the big plot twist in the story um so that was my fault but I still read it and it was still really good even though I knew that was gonna happen um so I, I kind of ruined it for myself but if I hadn't done that and maybe it would have been a little bit higher on this list but um yeah I ruined it for myself um okay number nine I have here okay here it is they both die at the end right here pretty popular books most of these are um some of them aren't but this one what did i say about this one? Oh yeah um so i want to talk about like how a lot of people say that like you know what's gonna happen in this book i mean it literally like the title you know what's gonna happen but like even though you do know what's going to happen it was still like such a good story and like so emotional too and um, I really liked getting both of the characters point of views in this story um and also like the universe of this story like you know basically you know when your death date is but like you only know that date so this story like covers two people that have the same death date on this day and like they meet up and like become friends you know but like they only have today you know so i really like this story um also the like 
second part of it they i forgot what it's called i'll put a picture of it up here i'll find it but i i kind of want to read that one too but it's so long and like i feel like what else is there to the story you know what i'm saying like i need to read the reviews of that book because i don't know anyways number eight i also read online this was heart bones by colleen hoover um i really like this book because like i said earlier i just like related to it a lot like more than i was expecting to like because someone um that like read one of my reviews of like my other books she was like you should read this book and i was like okay so i just read it like i didn't even know what to expect or anything and it was so good and i was like why is this me um you know also the title the title of the book i really like because it like really tied into the story really well like there's just some books that are just titled so good okay number seven i know how to count number seven is in here this is the wish by nicholas sparks i've read a lot a lot a lot of his books and this one like this one's just like really like stuck with me it's really good the ending of this book like it was so emotional like in so many different ways like so many things were happening that also tied back to like because like this story it's written in like there's like a past timeline that like she's telling the story in the future you know and like it just like tied back to the past and the future and like that's always just like emotional just i really like this book. i really like a lot of his books um the return is also really good and the best of me the movie to that one is also really good okay let's get number six number six i also read online this is before the coffee gets cold um and i don't know how to say the author's name but i'll put a picture anyway so i really like how this story was like in one setting or something like i really like um, if you've seen the movie The Breakfast Club, that's, like, one of my favorite movies, and, like, it literally only takes place in, like, one setting, and I really like books and movies like that for some reason, like, it's just simple, but the story or the movie is able to be so good, and, like, I just think that, like, shows how good, like, the author is, so I just, like, scratch my nose, um, I like telling a story, um, and also this story, I don't normally read, like, fantasy, like, things or whatever, but, like, one of, like, the main plot of this story is that there is, a, like, a cafe, like, a little restaurant, and if you sit in one seat, you can, like, time travel in the past or the future, and before the coffee gets cold, this is also a book that I really like the title, you have to come back to the present before the coffee gets cold. So, yeah, it's just really creative. And it's, like, like nothing that, like, nothing else on this list, you know? It's, it's unique. Anyways, it's number five. I, when I was writing this, I had number four at number five and number five and number four. Um, and then I switched them. So... Number five is on this page, and number four is right here. Number five, I have right here. People We Meet on Vacation by Emily. I really like this book. I also read Book Lovers by her, too, but I just didn't like that one that much. Like, I don't know. It was, it was just kind of, like, slow for me, which can be good sometimes. But anyways, I do really like her writing, though, and I really like this book. Um, Friends to Lovers. Um also kind of like opposites attract but also like over what am I trying to say like friends like friends for a long time to lovers like almost like a childhood romance but kind of like that anyways I just really like her writing style and like it was just like so easy to read for me like I mean this book is like one of the bigger books over here but it was just like like I just read it so fast and so that's what I like about it also Poppy is like one of the the, the girl main character's name and literally I have like three more books over there 
with a character named Poppy in them. So weird. Anyways. Okay, number four. I switched these two. Because, like, when I was writing all this down, I was just, like, writing more about this one. And I was like, do I like this one more? Maybe. But number four is You've Reached Sam. Also another popular book by Dustin. Anyways, this is also his, um, like, his first novel that he's ever written. Which is, like amazing because it is so good and literally this is like one of the first books I read this year so it's been like a while since I read this but I just remember like when I finished it I was literally crying like not to be like but um I think actually all of the rest of the books I was probably crying when I finished it um in the list but this one it was just so good so basically like these people are in a relationship and this isn't a spoiler because it just whatever but he dies and like but she can still like talk to him over the phone which is the main like plot of the story and it's basically like she doesn't know like how many phone calls they do have until she can't talk to him anymore um, oh yeah and also includes like flashbacks to when he was alive and also I, oh yeah I really liked the little subplot of Sam and one of his friends I forgot the friend's name but I said if he like if Dustin would, would have written like a second part to this or like a second part from like when Sam was alive that I would have liked more like I guess more like scenes with this friend because I think that relationship was really interesting and but then also like with Julie her name's Julie by the way like I would have just like more like flashback scenes of the friend and like other things in Sam's life too you know what I'm saying because like it feels like I don't get a lot of his like not like personality but just a lot of his like I don't know his like talking and stuff or whatever and like just like the way he is but I guess it's because he is dead but um yeah anyways this book is just really emotional I mean they're in a relationship and he dies so you know obviously so number three is in five years and this is one that I do have, but my sister has it right now, so I'll just put a picture of it up here. But this book was so, so good. So, so good. I, this book could, like, be made into a movie or, like, a TV series even. Like, that's how good it is. And it's also, like, not super big, so it's, like, really easy to read. And, um, so the main character, the plot is kind of difficult like you literally you just have to read it um so the main character Danny she wakes up and she's like in a different apartment and there's a different man next to her and she has a different ring on her finger but she's only so she's five she wakes up five years in the future obviously the book's called the five years and but she only spends one hour in this like new apartment with this new man and everything and like I mean she's like so confused and so in an hour and she goes back to the past to, to the present and so basically the book just follows her over these five years leading up to that day and that hour that she spent in the future and like it's just so crazy because all these things happen to her it's like when she finally gets to this day it's like totally different like now that we know what's going on it's totally different than what like you would expect and what she expected after going back to <laughs> this like this sounds so confusing um this sounds so confusing honestly just read the book um because it's good so anyways number two I have some books over here to show you about number two but I don't have this one with me this is one that my sister has it is The Cellar by Natasha Preston. And to show you guys my Natasha Preston collection over here. 
So I have all of these, and I've read all of them. And then I have the seller, which is number th two. And then two more that I haven't read. And then she's supposed to make two more, I think, next year. So I will get those two more and the new ones. And then when I get the seller back, it'll be right here. Um, all these are really good. I mean, the one that I didn't like as much was the twin as much as the rest of them. But anyways, the seller obviously is amazing. So all of her stories are like kind of like horror, like mystery, but also like about teenagers and like kind of romance and also about like family like they're all kind of about a bunch of like little different things but all kind of the same like category you know um but this one the seller this one is like different like the same but like different than all of them like I because like I had read probably like three of them and then I read the seller and then I read the other two so I like read those three and I was like oh, okay like she's cool like she's good whatever and so I went into the seller thinking it would be like those and it was just so like so much better and so much more intense like this book is scary this book is scary and if I could tell Natasha Preston anything I would tell her to make this into a movie or a tv show right now that's what I would tell her um Anyways, but this book is, like, terrifying. So let me tell you, let me tell you about it. Okay, so the main character, whose name is Summer, uh, so she's kidnapped, and she's trapped in a cellar, which is why it's called a cellar, but there are, like, other women and girls there, and the kidnapper, like, it's so, honestly, this book is kind of, like, kind of disturbing, um, <laughs> yeah so the kidnapper he like they're like his family though like he is insane and we actually I really like this well I didn't like it I mean he's insane but it was really interesting because like some of the chapters are written in his point of view which I was totally not expecting like I just started reading the book and then just got to like a few chapters with his name and I was like what but so that's just really interesting to like see what's like going on inside his head you know because obviously like yeah anyways so but all of the women and girls in there are like his family and it's so like the book is so disturbing because like I said the main character's name is Summer but he calls her like he calls the woman by like flower names and like his name is Colin but he goes by Clover and, like, he calls the woman, like, Lily or, like, Rose or something. And, like, it's so, it is insane. Like, if this, if she did make this into a movie or something, it would be so insane. It, it would be so good. But, yeah, this, like, this book just, like, stuck with me. Like, I, like, I can never forget the plot of this book because it was so scary. And it's in my head. Um... It was insane. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's move on. Okay, number one. We all know what it's going to be. So, here it is. Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia. This book, I literally read it at the perfect time. Like, because obviously the movie came out this year, this summer. And I read this like a few months before that. And I looked it up and I was like, there's a movie coming out. Which, let me say, if you haven't watched the movie but you have read the book, the movie does focus on, like, more, like, romance a little bit than the book does, and it's a little bit annoying. I mean, obviously, the movie's, like, really good, like, because it, it, I mean, it does, like, adapt the book, like, really good, like, in, like, scene for scene, you know, but it does focus on romance a little bit more, which I think is because people find interesting in a movie, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you hadn't read the book, you would think the movie was better, than someone who had read the book, if that makes sense. Anyways, I really like this book um, because it included, like, so many different things. Like, obviously, there's, like, romance, there's, like, crime, there's, like, family, um, it's, like, survival and, like, nature. Like, there's just so many things, like, 
in this book but like not like it doesn't get messy at all you know like it's like she's a really good writer also I think this is also the first novel that she that she wrote too I think I was gonna try to explain the plot um so basically there's this girl Kaya and like her family leaves her and like she lives on a marsh like in nature alone so we just like go over her life living in this marsh alone basically it there's there's so much that happens in the story um you should probably just go watch the trailer for the movie because the movie is a really good adaptation um so you should probably just go watch that i actually have the movie I bought it. I literally can't watch it that much though because it's so sad for me. Like, in the book too, I literally, like I said, these like top like three or four books, I just cried after I finished it. And this book, it's one of those ones where like so many things happen. I mean, the book covers this girl's whole life from the time she's like five or like six or something until she's like 80 or something so like there's a lot that happens you know but in the end like the last like few chapters i guess in the last few like 10 minutes or so of the movie so many things happen like sad and kind of happy and like whatever like so many things happen so the last like 10 minutes of the movie and the last like few chapters of the book i'm just crying the whole time so you know if a book's if a book makes you cry it's it's good so oh yeah also i like didn't read anything about the book or something before i read it like i don't know what i was doing i read this over the summer so i don't really re really remember but i just started reading it like i did not know what to expect so when i did get to those last few chapters like besides crying i was also just like so surprised i was like did that just happen like what because it does this in the movie too this is something let's talk about this um so one of kaya's like older friends like mentors or whatever um something <laughs> try not to spoil it but if you haven't read it by now that's your fault so uh someone dies at the like near the end of the movie or like near the last chapter but like not the last chapter someone dies and it just like it's like this is happening he dies this is happening and it's like what and it does this in both the book and the movie so and i'm just like what <laughs> he dies <laughs> the true oh um it's so good though because so much is happening and like i also like stories like that um some of nicholas sparks books are like this too that i like like it covers someone's whole life which is always just really good and which is always honestly just like emotional too because you see like how much they grow and like change and stuff which is always good like to learn that much about a character because then you get attached to them and then you get emotional when things start happening so but I'm just going to stop because this video is long. Anyways. That's crazy. Um, I've read so many good books this year. And I'm so thankful that I am able to buy all these books. And, like, so many of them just blew my mind of how good they were going to be. Not, like, not knowing what to expect going into them. You know? And... Like, I just, I hope I get to read some, like, books that surprise me just as much next year, you know? So I can make another one of these videos. Um, if you guys want, like, more information about any of these books, you can message me on Instagram. Um, and I'll tell you, give you some, like, spoilers if you want, or if you just want to talk about the books, that if you've read them or whatever. Um, or if you guys have any recommendations, let me know, because obviously you know what I like. Um, so yeah, just thank you guys. And this might be the last video I post this year. Um, I don't know, but thank you guys for watching. And if it is, I'll see you next year. Bye.